So we have seen uh, the definition of finite sets and we have learned a couple of properties about them. Uh, now it's turn, uh, it's our turn to learn about infinite sets. So let me begin with the definition for infinite sets. And the definition is simply saying that a set <coughs> A is infinite, is infinite if it is not finite. Simple enough. So all, all sets which are not finite are infinite. <coughs> and um, a set A is called countably infinite. So now we are trying to separate various types of infinite sets. So one of them is countably infinite sets. If there is a bijection between A and the set of natural numbers. So let me call this function f. So this function f is a function from A to n and this is a bijection. So this is what we mean by this notation that we used in the last lecture. So <coughs> it is called countably infinite if there is such a bijection. And a set is called countable countable if it is finite or countably infinite countably infinite if a set is not countable It is called uncountable. Countable. So, the first type of uh, infinite set is called countably infinite. So, this was the countably infinite set. Now, a set is called countable if it is finite, either finite or countably infinite. And if it is, if a set is not countable, then it is called uncountable. So we have <coughs> um, finite sets, countably infinite sets, and uncountable sets. Finite and countably infinite are taken together to and and called countable. So what are the example of um, examples of countably infinite sets? So of course a trivial example is uh, <coughs> uh, the set A to be the natural numbers itself and the bijection uh, let me call it I which takes n to n okay this is a bijection bijection so so by definition so this implies that by the by our definition of uh, countably infinite sets, n is countably infinite. <coughs> so this is almost by definition, right? Um, <coughs> what are other kinds of um, countably infinite sets? So before giving more examples, let me give a um, characterization so this is a theorem so let me call this theorem 6.1 and this is the characterization of um, countable sets okay so this theorem states that uh, the following statements are equivalent equivalent so first one is that uh, a set a is countable there is an 
injective map uh, G from A to the set of natural numbers and there is a surjective map H from the set of natural numbers to A. So what do I mean by equivalent? It just means that 1 is equivalent to 2 which is equivalent to 3. So in mathematics we uh, uh, often see such statements where one uh, where we have a list of statements which are equivalent and the way one shows it usually is to show that 1 implies 2 implies 3 implies 1. There are other ways to show it of course but this is perhaps the simplest way <coughs> and um, so in, in this uh, from this chain we deduce that 1 2 and 3 are equivalent okay so this is one way is a way to prove equivalence so let's use this to prove the theorem so proof so let's begin with 1 implies 2 so suppose a is countable then um, if a is infinite if a is finite then so what we need to show is that there exists a um, injective map g from a to n <coughs> uh, then we have that a is in bijective correspondence with 1 2 up to n for some n so just uh, let me introduce this terminology since this n is now uniquely determined by our previous theorem so um, we write n as mod a and this is called the cardinality of a so this is just a terminology um, that one uses so um, if a is finite then we have this bijection and <coughs> we have to show that to show that there exists a again i'm let me use this notation and this stands for there exists this is one of the logical quantifiers that we talked about <coughs> so um, there exists an injective map or an injection g from a to n so this is what we have to show um, so if a is finite then you can simply take g uh, to be this map so suppose i take uh, f to be our bijection okay so g from a to n is defined as follows so g a um, is equal to i if f of a equals i okay <coughs> and that's it okay so there's nothing more to do so this is an injective map why because if uh, g a equals g a prime then this implies that f a equals f a prime because this is how you define it g a to be so you can just write f a here this is f a and because f is a bijection this means that uh, f is an injection and so a equals a prime so this is um, uh, this is how we get that g is an injection so we are done so now we have to show that um, we still have an injection if a is countably infinite so if a is 
countably infinite <coughs> then how do we get a, an injective map g from a to n um, so if a is countably infinite there exists a bijection uh, g well uh, we can simply take the bijection uh, that it, that one has because a is countably infinite so uh, there exists a bijection bijection since um, a is countably infinite and so g is an injection okay um, so this proves the this implication one implies two now let us prove that two implies three so suppose that g a to n is an injective map is an injection then we have to produce a surjective map so we define define a map h from n to a as follows so in pictures it's clear what we are going to do so here is a and here is n okay so i'm just not putting a boundary on top because it goes all the way this is n and you have an injective map meaning that uh, you have these arrows that take elements of a to elements of the natural numbers and you want to define uh, uh, h the other way this should be h so how would you define it so just reverse these arrows reverse these arrows okay and you also have to define the values of uh, h on on the on the rest of the elements of n but you can put them all um, in in one uh, one of the values of a so for all all the rest of these values you put them all together um, here let's say this is a a1 okay so the first element so <coughs> this is what we do so if we, we define this map as follows so h n is equal to a if um, g a equals n okay and it is equal to um, a1 so choose we choose a1 in a and if um, a1 does not belong to the range of g okay um, sorry if n if n n does not belong to the range of g so this is what we are doing so this is all these red uh, lines that map to this uh, chosen <coughs> chosen element a1 and if uh, hn is uh, uh, if uh, if there is a g, g uh, if there is an element a which maps to n then then we simply uh, put that element and check that this is a surjective map this is a surjective map and this is true because you have an injective map uh, so given any a in a we can take uh, we can take uh, the element ga and then apply h to it 
so then h of g a is simply a okay so h is h is surjective so this means that 2 implies 3 so now we have to show that 3 implies 1 now to prove uh, that 3 implies 1 we have a surjection h and we show we want to show that there exists a bijection f between a and n so note that first we start with defining another function bet, uh, between a and uh, n so let g we define a function g from a to n as follows so g of a uh, so this is defined as the following so g of a is the smallest element element or smallest number smallest number in h inverse uh, of this set a so what is this uh, notation so h inverse of the um, set singleton set a is the collection of all natural numbers such that h n equals a Okay. So, in general, if you have a function f from a to b, um, then we can define f inverse b0 for any subset of b, b0. This is the set of all elements in a such that f of a um, belongs to b0. So, this is called the pre image of b0 pre-image set of b0 so here we are taking the pre-image set of the singleton set a and this is nothing but the set of all elements for which h of n equals a and note that since h is surjective this is always non-empty as h is surjective so you will always find a smallest number in this set so this is a subset of natural numbers and there will always be a smallest number so um, in this way the, the way we defined g we can check that g is an injective function okay uh, because if um, <coughs> g a equals g a prime this implies that the smallest element smallest element of h inverse a is equal to the smallest element element of h inverse a prime and if you denote this number by say k then k belongs to h inverse a and k and also h inverse a prime which means that h k equals a and h k equals a prime but this means that a equals a prime so g is injective and <coughs> now take a take the range g of a and if you consider this map g from g from a to this restricted range g a this is a subset of n but this is a now a bijection so g was already injective but it might not be surjective but when you restrict it to the range it becomes a uh, surjective function and because it was already injective it becomes a bijection so um, it is enough to show it is enough to show that any infinite subset of n is countable countably infinite 
Why? Well, if uh, G A is finite, then um, A is countable because then A will be finite because there is a bijection between a between A and a finite set. So we consider that G A is infinite, and now we have to show that as a subset of n, if it any infinite subset of n is countably infinite, then we are done because G A will be um, will be a countably infinite set and there exists a bijection between A and G A, so A will also be countably infinite. So let us show that um, any infinite subset of N is countably infinite. And for this, we use the principle of recursive definition, definition, which is the following principle. It is very similar to the induction principle. And it says that if A is a set and <coughs> H um, there is a formula which defines H1 as a unique unique element in A and for each i greater than 1 H i is defined uniquely in terms of they already defined values h1, h2, and h i minus 1. Then h is a well defined function, function from n to a. So it just says that <coughs> if you define um, recursively h i this is a uh, defined in terms of the already defined values h1 up to h i minus 1 and if it is unique unique in a then you have a function from n to a so this is the principle of recursive definition and we will use this principle to define a bijection between any subset of uh, the natural numbers uh, in with any infinite subset with the natural numbers so suppose that b is an infinite subset and let um, f from b to from n to b n to b be defined as follows so f1 is the smallest element of b So here again we are using the fact that b is a subset of the natural numbers so it has a smallest element and fn is the smallest element of b greater than fn minus 1 okay so uh, we are excluding so this is the smallest element of b minus f 1 to n minus 1 so uh, you take the range of f which is uh, on this set which is already defined for i equal to 1 to up to n minus 1 and you remove it from from this set b and then take the smallest element okay and one can check that this is a bijection so check that f is a bijection 
and um, by the principle of re recursive definition this gives you a well defined map from um, n to b so b is in bijective correspondence with n so this is countably infinite and so this is how we show that um, if you have a surjective function so our proof that 3 implies 1 if you have a surjective function h from n to a then a is countable now let me end this lecture by stating some properties of um, countable sets which i am not going to prove so the first one is that countable union of countable sets is countable um, the second one is that a subset of countable set is countable and the third one is finite cartesian product of countable sets is also countable so uh, for example an example of the first one is the union let a n be the set 1 2 up to n okay then the union of a n n equal to well n in n this is the indexed union then this is countable and of course in this case this is equal to n itself okay um secondly subset of countable sets so for example set of even numbers is countable and the third one is that if you take sets like n cross n cross n then this is countable so you can find again these the proofs of these statements in Munkris's book and we are going to skip this proof in this lecture but it is always good to remember these properties where you can create new countable sets from given ones